Are you interested in trying Android 12 on your Raspberry Pi? Well, even if developers like Consta work hard to make it easier to install with each version, there is a new issue currently, Open Gaps can't keep up the same rhythm and has still no package available for Android 12. Does it mean that you can have the Play Store with this version? No, I'll show you how to use it anyway in this video, so you can enjoy your favorite apps with the latest Android version on your Raspberry Pi. If it's your first time trying Android on a Raspberry Pi, here is an overview of the main steps. First, you'll need to download a specific build of Lineage OS for Raspberry Pi. It's an open source version of Android. Second, you'll install it on a new SD card. The procedure is almost the same as with any system. Finally, you'll start the system and install the missing Google apps, like the Play Store. This is mandatory if you want to use the same apps and games as on your phone or tablet. So, Google has no Android version available for Raspberry Pi or any other exotic device anyway. Lineage OS is a distribution with the goal to fix this, but they don't have any version directly available for Raspberry Pi. But someone did the work for us, and you can download an image ready to use on constacon.com. Pick your Raspberry Pi model in the menu and download the image. The other thing you need to download is the Google Apps package. Until now, I used and recommended Open Gaps to do this. If it's available for the latest Android version when you are watching this video, I still recommend getting them from there, but at the time I'm recording this, it has been two months we are waiting for it, and still nothing. Luckily, other developers are doing the same thing, and we can get it from other sources. The one I tested is Nick Gaps, and I didn't notice any major difference with Open Gaps. So, go to their website and download the package. It's a bit messy on their SourceForge repository, but you'll find the file we need under releases and then nick apps. Take the latest version for ARM64. The core version should be fine. Once you have everything on your computer, you can start by flashing the Android image on a new SD card. Use the tool you prefer, but in this case, I like to use Belena Etcher, it's slightly faster than Raspberry Pi Imager when you already have the image on your disk. You'll need to put the second file we downloaded on a USB key, so we can use it easily later. You need a USB drive formatted in FAT32, I believe XFAT works too, and put the file in it. If you are on Windows, do a right-click on the drive and click Format. Choose FAT32. Once done, just copy the file to it, and you're ready to move on. The system will start directly, there is nothing more to do on the first boot. You may need to configure a few things like the internet connection or language and keyboard layout, but you can see that later. For now, we'll just restart in safe mode to install the Nick Apps package. You no longer need to enable developer mode, run a command and a terminal, etc. The installation is now way easier. Just go to the settings, click on system and then advanced settings. Enable the first option, reboot to recovery and restart your device. This will give you access to the recovery mode, where you can manually change things on your system. We'll use it to add Google Apps. Plug your USB key with Nick Gaps on it. You can go to the mount item in the menu, and make sure the USB key is detected and mounted. The box needs to be checked. Then go to install. Click on select storage and choose the USB drive. Click on the package name and start the installation. A few seconds later, everything is installed, and you can now reboot in normal mode. After the reboot, the Play Store will now be available in your app list. You can then sign in as with any Android device to access your account and download any app you want. 
Before doing this, don't forget to configure the network. I'm using an Ethernet cable, but the Wi-Fi is working correctly if you want. Sign in with your Google account to complete the installation. You can now access the entire app's catalog and install any application or game you want. If you already used Android previously, you can quickly reinstall the same app on your Raspberry Pi. And that's it, you are ready for hours of gaming, streaming or even work. If you are serious with using Android on your Raspberry Pi, I would highly recommend trying the Raspid. It turns your device into a real tablet. There is a touch screen, a battery, and it's awesome. Obviously, you can use it with any operating system, but Android is a perfect fit. Check the link in the description for more details, I have a complete review about it on my website. I hope this video was useful, but you should also check this one, that YouTube think you need to watch.